Hey everybody, it's the coach, and this is Madden 19 on EA Sports. Up next, we've got what ought to be a great matchup between the Oakland Raiders and the Los Angeles Chargers. So with that, let's get you out to Southern California as standing by at Stub Hub Stadium. Here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. EA Sports coverage of the NFL takes us to the StubHub Center, 20 miles south of downtown L.A. Today, it's a matchup in the AFC West between the Oakland Raiders and the Los Angeles Chargers. Brandon Gordon, Charles Davis, happy to be with you. And Charles, we've got two teams who know each other extremely well. These division games, they tend to be battles. People scout like crazy in this league but no one scouts more than within the division. Because if you win your division, you're automatically in the playoffs. That puts extra emphasis on these games, and they can't wait to get at each other. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. So here comes the Raider offense now onto the field. They'll be let out by their quarterback out of Fresno State. It's the pro bowler, Derek Carr. And one of the things that I think that Derek Carr has really improved in doing since college, his ability to stay in the pocket, things swirling around him, find the right guy, and deliver the ball with accuracy. Derek Carr has great touch when he throws the football. First carry for Marshawn Lynch. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. And the big boys up front in the trenches. What do you think of the O-line, Charles? I love them because this is a group that's so cohesive. They know what the man next to them is going to do at all times. And they operate as a terrific unit. Second down, Lynch. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. That'll be a loss of a yard, and it leads to a third down. I know when I was a kid, I always got real excited when I saw those lateral-type runs. But the best backs that made it happen, they put a foot in the ground and just go. That didn't happen there. That play got swallowed up. Now Carr. And the Chargers rush is going to get there. Down he goes. Melvin Ingram. Coming in to drop him for a loss of eight, and it'll be fourth down. You never want to give up a sack. From the O-line's perspective, they hate it for several reasons, especially because they felt like they let little brother down back there in the pocket. Oh, no doubt. They have a ton of pride, and they go into every job wanting to keep that guy clean. They want that uniform with no grass stains, no dirt, nothing on it, but it's really, really difficult. You're talking about some terrific athletes who are trying to put him on the ground. So Rivers will lead the Chargers up first and 10 at their own 15. Rivers now to throw on first down. Caught left side, Williams. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. First play of the drive, a success, 19 yards. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Good. We 90. We got... Now a first carry for Melvin Gordon. And he'll get this only up to about the 35. Arden Key, the ex-LSU Tiger there on the stop. And we get a quick look at the Chargers starting offense. I have to admit, I've rather enjoyed watching Melvin Gordon's improvement as he's developed as an NFL player because it started for me in college. Every year he was in school, 
he would add something extra to his game. First year, he knew how to run. He wanted to add pass receiving to his game. The next year, he wanted to add pass protection to his game. Did all of that. That turned him into a first-rounder, and now a front-line NFL back. And very little room to maneuver. He'll get this down to about the 39. Give him three on the run there. Now they're looking at a third and about five. Partner, your thoughts on this D-line? I love a unit that can control the run and get after the passer. This is an all-around terrific defensive front. Hard to move the ball against them on the ground, and then when you want to throw it, look out. Here they come after the quarterback. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. Hey. Working out of the gun, Rivers. He's airing it out for Williams. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off by Rashawn Melvin. And they are going to take over right there at the 22-yard line. Now they told us repeatedly earlier in the week in our meetings, we need some plays from our defense here on the road early. They got one. And don't think they were above all week long pointing out to their defense that the other defense is rated higher than them. You gonna let that happen, guys? Is that how we're going to play? And they responded to the challenge. Well, you had to punt on your first drive, and on the first play of the second drive, you end up going backwards. I would dare say they need something good to happen right here, right now. A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. Back to the ground, this time Lynch. And he'll find some space up to about the 25. Four yards on the pickup there as they get it back to a more manageable third and seven. Time quickly to look at the Chargers defense. Isn't it funny, Brandon, back in the good old days, we rarely spotlighted defensive tackles, but in this case, we have to. Corey Legit is one of those guys who's been a base player, taking on double and triple teams. Now he shed a little weight in the offseason, trying to get a little quicker, wants to make a few more plays upfield. Throwing his car on third down. He completes it to Jordy Nelson. And he gets it to the 34. Good enough for the first. First down Raiders. The former Packer Jordy Nelson on the receiving end from Carr. Nice catch right there. Brings to mind the sentence. When in doubt, find your veterans. He used to laugh back in the day when they would call guys like him crafty veterans. You, you get up in your 30s, you're still playing receiver, but you're around that long at that position, you're doing something right. Just remember this. When he was young, he thought the... Now a clash of bodies here, and it's intercepted. Derwin James with a pick. And a great return as he's up close to the 40-yard line. Brandon LaFell, the intended receiver. I know some teams are leery about playing cover, too, because the strong safety's not usually a terrific cover guy. But in this case, he played it perfectly. Read the football and went and made the interception. Following the interception here, Rivers. And he'll be hit as he releases it. And that'll fall incomplete. He was trying to get that one to Allen that time. And now it's second down. And that's one he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. Set. 380. Throwing again, Rivers on second and 10. Over the middle, he's got Tyrell Williams. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. And they'll get nine there as that sets them up better for third down. So they're on that play. Offensively, they ran the crossing route. Defense was in zone coverage. So as a former DB, how tough is it to defend that? It's really difficult because your natural inclination is to chase the receiver and maybe leave your zone. So you have to have discipline in order to talk to your other coverage guys and let them know that that receiver is crossing from your zone to the next zone he's coming your way make sure you have him and then when the ball is actually thrown secure the tackle when they're moving on crossing routes if you miss a tackle it usually results in a big play the nfl on ea sports is presented by snickers you're not you and you're hungry snickers satisfies Back now to begin the second quarter with Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon. It's the Chargers here with a football. They've got a third down and a yard to start things out. Throwing Rivers. Looking for his tight end Gates, and it's intercepted. Picked off near the 44. 
and he'll return this one just shy of midfield to the 49. So that's back-to-back -back drives where they're throwing an interception. Ordinarily, we look at the offense and say, what's going on with your scheme? Maybe we should look at the defense and just give them a whole lot of credit. They've got them frustrated right now. Carr and the Raiders come up first and 10, just shy of midfield at the 49. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he's going to get across midfield and into Charger territory. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. What that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. Carr gives to Marshawn. And he'll get this down only to about the 46. Give him three on the run there. Now they're looking at a third and about five. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things, but the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blows. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. From the gun now on third down, Carr. And that's complete to LaFell. And he's got this down to the 35. His first catch of the game, good for 11 and a first down. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. First down, the run with Lynch. And that play went nowhere. Losing yardage, it'll be back at the 36. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Anytime you call an inside running play, you just know there should be a lot of congestion there. You're counting on your offensive line to take control of the line of scrimmage. That didn't happen in this case, and that play got bottled up. Here's a give to Lynch, and nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain that time, and it leaves him with third and 11 coming up. And he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, that was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom, quick, quick, quick. And what a terrific play, holding them to no gain. Chargers able to get the pressure and bring him down. Joey Bosa able to get him down for a loss of 11 on the play. And it'll be fourth down. And on that one, the protection just broke down. You've got to have that leverage, don't you? We always talk about low man wins in the running game for an offensive lineman versus a defensive lineman. It's essentially the same thing in pass protection. Get lower than that defensive lineman so that you can keep your balance and keep him away from your guy trying to throw the football. So Rivers will lead the Chargers up first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. They'll start the drive with a run by Gordon. And he'll take this up near the 35, maybe the 34. Nine yards on the run there, and it will take us to the two-minute warning. Two minutes remain in a scoreless first half. We'll come back to Southern California after this. A reminder, coming up at halftime, we'll check in with our Jonathan Coachman. He'll have highlights and analysis of the first half, and our highlights will likely be on the defensive side of the football here. Scoreless game. Now Rivers. And for the third time here in this half, it's intercepted. Picked up by Carl Joseph. And he takes this one back into the end zone, and the Raider defense delivers a score. Well, partner, I do know this. If you're a defensive back, you have more chances to make a team now than ever because people are using five defensive backs, six defensive back packages. Not exclusively, but way more than before. That was a nickel package there, and what a pickoff. Why is that? Why are they using that more? Because more people are throwing the ball on earlier downs than ever before. This has become a passing league, and because of that, more defensive backs on the field on most plays. Now for the extra point, Daniel Carlson. And 
Extra point by Carlson, up and good. And that makes the score 7-0. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. Now Austin Eckler on the return. Solid return. Pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32-yard line. Phillip Rivers, he is the focal point of our player spotlight now. So with the three interceptions, how does he erase those from his mind and just focus on this drive? I think he may need some help from the coaching staff. Maybe the offensive coordinator says, okay, let's do a few of the shorter throws, quick rhythm throws where the ball's out of his hand quickly into a receiver before the defense can react. Maybe not take so many shots downfield, just in case. Get your confidence back up, and then later on, you expand the targets again. Yeah, the kiss method. Keep it simple, stupid. Right? I love it. I love it. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Back to it after the pick six. Rivers on the right side, caught by Green. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. So a decent gain, but all for naught on the penalty. It's too bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. Only people celebrating, the guys who just gave up that play. So following the hold, they're in a bit of a hole here with a first and 20. Single, single, single. Ready, 390. 50, 50, 50. Okay, just like that, just like that. Shot. From the shotgun, it's Rivers. And this is caught, first catch for Keenan Allen. 19 yards to pick up there. Thus far, it hasn't been a real fun half for them, but a play like that, that may get them off the schneid a little bit, get them loosened up and moving. Kind of seems like they've been sleepwalking and still sitting on zero points. And it's not always making an adjustment. Sometimes it's just going back to what you know can work and finally getting it done. Rivers now on second down. Hunter Henry brings it in. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. He's got his first catch here before halftime, and it goes for a first down. Not only have they completed a couple on this drive, but they peeled off some pretty good chunks of yardage, too. Absolutely great start. Two nice plays in the pass game. Now can they continue to feed off that? Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Final play of the half, Rivers. He's going to fire one deep, middle of the field. And it's knocked away and incomplete. So we've reached halftime with the visiting Raiders out in front. As we send you to Orlando to check in with Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach? All right, hang on. We'll jump over halftime. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. Here's Desmond King on the return. <laughs> and he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. 
Phillip Rivers now gears up to take the offense back out there. And that first half was nothing short of a disaster. Zero points on the scoreboard in a big three in the INT column. So they've got to get him going, obviously, right? So you've got to get him in rhythm. And we always think of short passes. I think of jet sweeps where they just kind of toss the ball forward. You know that counts as a forward pass. And then you can say to him, look at that. You completed three, Man, four, five in a row. Now you've got to get your confidence going. The first down throw here for Rivers. And his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. Picked off at about the 31. And they will take over at the 29-yard line. Oh, timing is everything on a route like this. He tried to drive that football into a tight spot. And if you're a little early or a little late, chances are there's going to be someone there. And sure enough, this one's going the other way. They'll run to Marshawn Lynch. And this has been a familiar sight all afternoon as they stop him behind the line. Joey Bosa with the tackle for loss. How about that pedigree in his family? Yeah, some good pedigree. Tell us about it, Mr. Davis. Dad played in the NFL, first-round draft pick. Uncle was a first-round draft pick. He's got a brother coming behind him. But Joey Bosa, guy plays really, really hard and plays all aspects on defense. A three-yard loss to start the drive. They'll look to make that up and then some on second and 13. Car to throw on second down. Caught by Nelson left side. And he'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26-yard line. That catch good for five. It's third down. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helped to have a guy who can turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. In danger of squandering their great field position as they come up on a third and seven. Working from the gun, it's Carr. Finding a safety valve here. That's complete. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. A pickup of 10, and it's enough for an Oakland first down. We always talk about having to read defenses and how complicated that is. Well, this was an excellent read. Read the pressure and got rid of the football before it even got to him for a nice game. And when they're blitzing like that, running back usually a good spot to go with the football? Without a doubt, because he's right in your sight line or he's near you. So you're able to just get it to him easily. And once he gets in space, that's usually a good matchup for him. Took till the second half, but finally a red zone opportunity here. They come up first and 10 at the 16. Hey, 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 hey. Get down, get down. On the give, this is Lynch. And he'll take this one down near the 15. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Tough first half for him, unable to put up the numbers he's used to producing. But with a guy like him, you and I both know it just takes a couple of explosive touches for him to make an impact on this game and on the stat sheet as well.
second down. Here's Carr. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. A solid pickup of 13 sets him up first and goal. They ran that one well. And not only did they pick up a nice chunk of yardage on the screen, they sent a message to the defense. Rush the passer all you want, but you better be careful. We can hit you going back the other direction. From the gun, it's Carr. And it is caught at the seven-yard line. And he'll get blown up behind the line of scrimmage. Back at the six. If you're a selfish player and you're throwing the ball, you're cool with the completion. Maybe not so cool with the yardage loss, though, huh? Yeah, you went, you went backwards on the yardage. That kind of works like a sack for the defense there. Yeah, it's a really big play for them, right? Able to figure it out, sniff it out, and finish it off. That's going to be caught at the 10-yard line. And a good display of footwork will only get him just inside the five to the four. Only able to pick up two, and that leads us to third and goal. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware a ball may come your way. They've been so good on third down all day long. Can they convert another here on third and goal? Get down, get down. You ready? Again, they'll throw with Carr. And that is incomplete. Let's give this defense some credit now. They let the guys get downfield. But when push came to shove, they stood their ground. And now they'll likely force a field goal attempt. Carlson able to put this one through. And the lead moves to 10 zip. So put another three on the board. All things considered, a good opening drive to begin the third quarter. And as a defense, the way that this game is going, you're excited to see those points go on the board. Gives them a little bit of leeway to play with when they're out on the field. But they're real excited to see their offense score. Now they get to go out there and do their part. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. Phillip Rivers now gears up to lead the offense on the field. And he comes out on the heels of an interception he threw last time they had the ball. Yeah, and you know, the quarterbacks that I know that are the best ones, the ones that really know how to lead their team, they tell them, that's on me. That's my bad. But let's go back out there and move ahead again, guys. We can get this done. One good thing for him, it did only lead to three points and not a touchdown after that turnover. Big thanks to the defense. 23 yards on the play. Well, clearly one of his advantages as a passer is his height, sit back in the pocket, fired over the middle. That makes things tougher defensively, doesn't it? It really does because your goal is to move the quarterback off his initial spot when he gets his drop back completed. And nowhere to get away. Rivers is dropped. Well, the beauty of screen passes is they take a little time to develop and they can often hit big, but sometimes they take too long to develop and sometimes you get sacked. Yeah, what's perfectly called for a defense to attack a screen? Typically a blitz. And even though people think that the screen operates against the blitz, if you have the blitz called and you still cover the screen, now that allows your blitzers to get there. That goes for a gain of 31. The last drive he threw the pick, but he's not shy. He's going downfield again there. And you can't be, because if you back off after throwing an interception, your whole game plan just goes right out the window, and it makes things easier for a defense. And you and I both know, there's a quarterback in this league that's any good that doesn't throw an interception occasionally, and they usually bounce back in a big way. I've seen guys throw five and still find a way to win the game in the end. Back now at the StubHub Center in Carson. It's Charger football, but they trail here as we get going in quarter number four. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. 
Rivers on first down. And nearly picked it off. He had a chance to come down with that in the end zone, but it'll wind up just being incomplete. Hey! Brandon, at least there's one bright side to that incompletion. What's that? It wasn't an interception. Wow. <laughs> you're, you're a nice guy. That was kind of savage. But correct. No, no pick, just incomplete that time. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. That's incomplete. Nearly another pick. My goodness. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. The pressure drops off as they'll look to throw. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. This defense is continuing to contest every deep ball that is thrown downfield. And look, it doesn't matter whether you're playing man or zone. Eventually, that becomes man on man. And you've got to trust yourself and go up at that moment of truth and make a play on the football. All right, so they needed two scores to get back in the game. The field goal there, maybe not exactly what they wanted, but the necessary first step. There's still time remaining, and there's enough time to get it done. They've got to get at the least a three and out here to get the ball back, preferably a takeaway. This game back within a touchdown now as the kickoff's away. This is fielded at the goal line. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Now the Raiders' offense, they get set to head back on the field. They're holding on right now to that slim advantage in a one-score game. And you hear a lot about two-minute offense and four-minute offense. Obviously, the four-minute offense applies here. How do they run that effectively? Yeah, really what the four-minute offense is is you're just trying to grind the clock. So you want consistent gains, steady gains. Doesn't have to be big plays. But it has to be plays that gets first downs and keeps the ball away from your opponent. But certainly throwing the ball is in the mix here. It certainly is. Just make sure that you're careful with it. And again, get those first downs, keep possession of the football. Give them three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Brandon, you know how many times we've done games, and at the start of the fourth quarter, we see both teams hold up the four fingers, four quarters, hours. Well, how about this drive? You saw the four fingers for four-minute offense. And this offensive line has really hunkered down and established themselves. Now, this is where they say, put the game on our shoulders, we'll lead the way, right? No doubt about it. And let me tell you, if you're a running back, all you want to do is get behind those big fellas, have a little vision, and find some space. And a solid way to do that on the first play of the drive there. Get down, get down! From the gun on third down, Carr. It's caught, Nelson. And he's going to have a first down as he's brought down at the 44-yard line. Nine yards on the pick up there, and it keeps the drive alive. Couldn't just sit on it here, could they? Had to throw the ball on third down. Got the big completion in the pickup. Fresh set of downs now. They've got to feel great. And defensively a backbreaker. Over the middle, it's Jared Cook. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. That one good for 13 and a Raider first down. Another nice pickup through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect him to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. And this has been a familiar sight all afternoon as they stop him behind the line. He has just been completely taken out of this game. We're in the fourth quarter. He's single digits in the rushing department. And I know we look at him because the numbers do go to his production. But how about the guys blocking for him? They don't just have his number as a ball carrier. They've got the number of the offensive line and the other guys because they're getting to him before he can get started. Again, they'll pound it with Lynch. And they will stop him after a fairly minimal pickup. One yard officially on the pickup. And it'll leave him with a third and 11. I like a guy who understands the situation. I also like a guy who you look at him and you say, that looks like a guy who knows the coach is going to say, guess what? You drop this one, you'll be carrying around the training facility for an entire week. <laughs> Maybe flashback to high school or college, carrying it around campus, right? Maybe the old gauntlet drill, right? Anyone get the ball out while he's, while he's sitting in class and bring it back to the coach? He's in big trouble. And he's going to be met at about the 43. Only a yard on the pick up there, and it's going to leave him with a fourth down. Now the Chargers are going to look up here and signal for a timeout as they get the stoppage with 65 seconds remaining.
So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This to make it a two-score game. Here comes the Chargers offense now back out onto the field. They're down here in a one-score game. But the time, it's a factor, but it's not a huge factor right now, is it? It's really not because this amount of time gives them a chance to run their offense, to go through play sequences. And this is what they work on every week in practice, usually on a Friday. They go over this type of a situation, late-game situation. What are we going to do when we have the opportunity? They've called these plays a bunch of times. Now's their chance to execute them. Yeah, they have the opportunity now. Here's the execution. Caught on the left side by Benjamin. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. A really nice gain of 25 yards. First down now, but that clock rolling. He'll look to throw. And this one is incomplete. He was looking for Travis Benjamin that time. And it's second down. There's definitely contact there, but it's the fourth quarter of a kind of tight game, and sometimes the officials just say, let them play. Kind of like your mom used to, you and your brothers, just take the broom to you and send you out to the backyard and tell you to settle it yourselves. <laughs> I like that, yeah. There was contact. I don't know, like you said, enough to warrant the flag. It was close, though. And oh, so close as he takes it all the way to the two-yard line. A big play there for L.A. 55 yards. They still got two timeouts. Got to start using them, don't they? You absolutely have to. You save them for this situation, but you have to use them. Back to throw. And he can't hang on to it. That would have sealed it. Instead, second down. They took their shot for the end zone. Almost cost them. And he made the right play there, knocking it away. But, boy, it looked like he had a chance to come down with the football. And if he does that, this thing is over instead. He... And his ball is caught. It's a touchdown. And now in the final seconds, they're a PAT away from likely getting this thing to overtime. Obviously, the excitement level here is almost a fever pitch. Down one is tempting to go for two. <laughs> I say you go ahead and the extra point you got the home crowd carried into overtime i'm with you i do see some fans though holding up two fingers easy now yeah but they're not the ones who have to actually make that call are they fielded about a yard deep and with time of factor here late he'll just take a knee and they'll start things out at the 25. handoff Lynch and he'll take this for a short gain on what will prove to be the final play of this ball game four quarters not enough we're all even and to overtime we go how much fun is this for everyone who's watching the game how much fun is it for us to see this one get an extra period to get settled it's a little teaching moment here overtime rules remind us how this goes partner Okay, so in the past, we had sudden death. First team to score wins, but no longer. Now, if the team receives the ball, scores a touchdown, they win the game. If they kick a field goal, though, or don't score, the other team gets a possession. And after both teams get a possession, then we're into sudden death. First team to score wins the game. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. The Chargers offense now, they get set to head back on the field. They control their own destiny here. They have the football in overtime. Obviously, a touchdown would win it. And I think teams around the league are still adjusting to the idea of going downfield, scoring a touchdown, wins the game because they were used to just going downfield and trying to get in field goal range to win a game. Still having to make that transition. Let's face it now, the ones who are doing it best know they need to go down, attack, put the ball in the end zone, and not leave it up to a field goal and give the other team a chance. Yeah, as we said, they control their own destiny now. 
So they come out throwing in the extra session and get a nice hook up right away. Oh, yeah. Tells you a lot about what a coach feels about his team, doesn't it? That type of a play in overtime. So many people in this situation play not to lose. Oh, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Gary and Conley. And they will take over at the 26-yard line. A costly mistake here at OT. And you know what they say when you throw an interception like that in overtime? You don't usually get a chance to throw a second one. I mean, I'm not sure the analytics on it. Let's ask Marvin, our statistician, to, to ring that down for us. That's typically how coaches and teams feel about it. If you throw one, you likely cost yourself the game. Give him a couple on the scramble. It's second down. Yeah, he only gets a few yards on first and ten, but he's better off doing that than throwing an incompletion or even worse, an interception. Gives to Lynch on the draw. And that didn't fool anybody. He's going to be dropped in the backfield. It's a loss of two. Now third down. Now that play was doomed right from the start. They just about ran into every defender on that one, didn't he? It felt like everyone got a piece of that tackle. What can Carr do now with his drive? And this is going to be incomplete. The defense does its job. Now they're going to get the ball here in overtime with a chance to win it. Major League kudos to them because to get the ball back in this spot, everything was on them. It had to happen, and they pulled it off. They'll get it back for their offense with a chance to win. Phillip Rivers now gears up to take the offense back out there. So he didn't start this one the way he wanted to, but yeah, he's so elite, been through so many of these battles. Hard to keep him down for an extended period of time. And to demonstrate just how unusual this start was for him, our guy Marvin handed us some statistics that showed us he doesn't do this very often. What we're seeing now, though, that's what we're used to seeing. He made an adjustment, and boy, it's working really well. Back to his old form. Meanwhile, they take a shot to start the drive, but this is going to wind up incomplete. I'm trying to decipher what's going on out there because I don't know if he's just getting bad reads. I don't know if the defense is confusing him. I don't know if he just has, you know, bad info and intel before he snaps the ball, but he's made some pretty bad decisions with the football lately. He has several bad decisions on the interceptions he's thrown, and frankly, that should have been another pick right there. Now, a deep ball there on second down, but it'll wind up incomplete. They decided to take a shot and right down the middle of the field. And really, they didn't give it as much time to develop, did they? They want to take that shot somewhere around the 15-yard mark. And the defense able to recover. Batted free. He's got his man. It's Williams. They chopped that one up as a gain of 34 on third down. That was an excellent read right there. Saw cover one. That means it's just a single high safety. So you know if you throw the ball to the outside part of the field, Help is going to be a little bit late getting there. And he puts one out there for a big-time completion. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down. A very solid gain on that play. On second down, they'll run with Gordon. And the lane closes up quickly as he'll get about three down to the 38. The Chargers on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. They're up against a third and one situation. They'll try and run it. Here's Gordon. No gain on the play there, and it'll bring up fourth down. Nice job there defensively to clamp down because really... They've been on their heels this drive. Agreed, and they really needed that one for confidence, just to feel a little bit better. But I don't know if I would be daunted by them stopping me on one run. This drive has gone pretty well. I could come right back at them. So this is certainly a tough test here in the early career of the rookie kicker. Now the Raiders are going to use another timeout here. They'll be down to just one remaining as we step aside here in overtime. All right, so the timeout over and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense.
So this is certainly a tough test here in the early career of the rookie kicker. This to win it in overtime. And he got it. The kick is good in overtime. He's able to split the uprights. We were just treated to an absolute dandy in this one. A great finish in overtime with a long field goal. Everybody, including us, on the edge of their seats. Quite a game. And it's rare that you get a game into overtime that it doesn't turn out to be a dandy, right? That's what we saw here. And just what you were talking about, a long field goal to win it. So definitely not a gimme. So there was tension all the way through until the ball went through the post. But it did go through the post. Ice water was in his veins. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. From Southern California, so long, everybody.